Welcome to the second video on making a contribution to the data miner docs. In the first video, I explained to you the difference between a small and a larger contribution. A small contribution would be you wanting to correct a spelling mistake you noticed. You would do this via the quick edit mode online. This was shown in the previous video. In this video, I will show you how to set up everything to make a larger contribution. For this, we will need to download GitHub Desktop, Visual Studio Code, and Dockerfix. Now, why would you go through all of this? What's the positive side of Visual Studio Code? Well, first of all, team documentation at Skyline Communication all also works with Visual Studio Code. So when something goes wrong on your end, we are able to help you out because we are very familiar with Visual Studio Code. Of course, you're always allowed to use another program or another method, but we advise you to use Visual Studio Code. Then secondly, Visual Studio Code also offers a lot of useful tools. For example, uh, you will be alerted when you have a problem in your markdown. You can just easily go to your problem uh, section and see what is still uh, needed, needing to be changed. You also have a test build integrated in Visual Studio Code. With this test build, you can create a local host version of the data miner documentation in which you can then see a, um, a preview of how your end result will eventually look. Okay, now that I've explained the positives of Visual Studio Code, we will go ahead and start the download process. The first thing we need to download is, is GitHub Desktop. To download GitHub Desktop, we go to the website desktop.github.com. Just go ahead and copy this down. We click the button Download for Windows. Once it's been downloaded, GitHub Desktop will launch automatically. And then this is what you'll see. There's also the possibility that you will see a pop-up notification which asks you to log in. I've already been logged in before, so I don't get this notification anymore, but I will show you how to log in when you don't get this pop-up notification. You go to File, you click Options, and then you can sign in this way. Continue with Browser, and then just type in your username and your password. If you don't have a GitHub account at this point, click the Create an Account button, and then sign in afterwards. Okay. Now that we've been signed in, we go ahead and clone a repository from the internet. Go to the URL tab, and here you can see that we need to copy a repository URL. We will find this online on github.com. So I will go ahead and open that up. And we want to work in the data miner docs repository. Here we can see the repository result. Go ahead and click this. However, we don't want to, be want to be working directly into the data miner docs repository. We don't have the rights to do so. To go uh, to surpass this, we click fork. And this way, we can create our own copy of the data miner docs repository. Go ahead and click the green create fork button. OK, now that you've created your fork, go ahead and copy this URL and go back to GitHub Desktop. Here we can paste this and then click Clone. And now the Data Miner Docs repository will be cloned entirely on your computer and you will be able to work in it freely without messing up. And then eventually you will be able to uh, make a pull request. Now that you've downloaded this uh, copy of the repository, go ahead and leave it on to contribute to the parent project and click Continue. OK, that was that for GitHub Desktop. Go ahead and close it. Now we go to code.visualstudio.com because Visual Studio Code is the second thing we want to download. Click the big Download for Windows button. And then click Keep and wait until it's been installed. Uh, once it's been installed, you will get this setup window and you click, I accept the agreement. 
just go through everything. You can choose this however you want it. I will leave it as it is and click next. And then eventually we want to install. Okay, just click the finish button once it's been downloaded. You don't have to uh, click launch Visual Studio Code because we first still have to download Dockerfix. To download Dockerfix, we go to, go to the website github.com slash .net slash Dockerfix slash releases. We want to download the latest version of Dockerfix. We also don't want to download a beta version. So skip all these pre-releases until you see the latest version of Dockerfix. You can find the Dockerfix zip file beneath it. Once your Dockerfix zip file has been downloaded, open up your file explorer, go to your downloads tab, and then unzip it, extract all files. I will see you once you've done that. Now that you've extracted your Dockerfix zip file, you can find it here in your downloads folder. Go ahead and copy that local path because we will need it when we go through the next step. Okay, click the Windows button on your keyboard. Tip, type in path and open up edit the system environment variables. Click environment variables and then scroll down until you see path under system variables. Click edit. We want to add our local path that we've just copied in this list. To do so, click new and just paste it here. Then we click OK and we just close this. To check whether we've done this correctly and whether Dockerfix has been installed correctly on our computer, we once again click the Windows button and type in CMD to open up the command prompt. In the command prompt, we type in Dockerfix help. And when you get this, you know that you've correctly installed Dockerfix to your, to your laptop or your PC. Close the command prompt and open up GitHub Desktop again. Now you can see that Open in Visual Studio Code has appeared on your GitHub Desktop. We can go ahead and click this button. They will ask you whether you want to trust the authors. Just go ahead and click yes. And now you can already see that the entire data miner docs repository is listed on the left side of your screen. So that's been installed correctly. We want to change a few things in our settings and we also want to download a few extensions to optimize our use of Visual Studio Code. Of course, this isn't compulsory. It's just uh, an advice we give to you to make your use of Visual Studio Code as, uh, as agreeable as possible. Click this button to access the extensions tab. We want to go ahead, we want to go ahead and download the learn authoring pack because this has a lot of useful extensions. Here you can see the list of everything that's included. Uh, this includes a code spell checker, a markdown lint, etc. It's very useful if you want to learn more in depth what this is about. Go ahead and read all the details. Okay, this is installing, and in the meantime, we go to our settings. You can find the settings in this uh, when you click the Coggle button in the left corner. What do we want to change? You can find this easily by using the search bar tool. We want to change a few things in the editor. First of all, we want to make sure that this checkbox has been clicked. So make sure this is correct and then scroll down and make sure that this editor render white space is set to all. Okay. In the meantime, I think um, learn authoring pack will be installed. Yes. So we will go ahead, go back to our settings and try to change a few things in there as well. We can once again use the search bar tool and we type in markdown show toolbar. Okay, and then you make sure that this is checked as well. Okay, that's all we want to change in our settings. Okay, and that was that. We've now, we've now installed everything you need to make a contribution in the data miner docs. In the next video, I will explain to you how to make this contribution, how to find a file in the data miner docs, 
and then how to make a pull request. I hope to see you in the next video.